Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. So we are in our beloved FA-18C Hornet and today we're going to look at land base ILS. So the Hornet does have an ILS system, it's known as ICLS and as you probably already know it only works for naval applications, it only works on aircraft carriers, it does not work on ground airfields because the ground airfields don't have the ICLS transmitters. So this means that we're just going to have to get creative. Now we still need an ILS because we're still going to need to make non-visual landings on ground runways as we're about to do today. We've got literally no visibility, we won't see the runway until we're literally wheels down, that's how bad it is. So we do need an IFR, an instrument, uh, ILS instrument landing system. So we're going to do the best with what we've got. Now we do have on this airplane, luckily, an extremely good TACAN and an extremely good HSI, the best that we've got in DCS at the moment. So we're going to use that to get on with it. And um, basically in an aircraft, you don't need a dedicated ILS system to make a non-visual lander. You can use even the prehistoric ADF, automatic direction finding, NDB systems. You can still make a decent IFR landing, TACAN, RSBN. Um, so let's have a look at our situation. Here we are. We are about 30 miles away from this place, Sinaki. It is going to be runway 09 we're going to be landing on. We're going to use our TACAN. So we need an airfield that has a TACAN station. So we click on it. We can find... Where's the TACAN? There it is. It is code 31 X-ray. Uh, code name TSK. So we're going to tune into that station. What we also need is a exact course of the runway it's called 09 but that's not accurate enough for us so we're gonna um there may be a better way of doing this actually is there nope we're gonna have to do it ourselves so we're gonna just draw a line down the runway and what we're gonna get is if we look at the top zero nine four we've got zero nine four degrees that's what we're going to be tuning into and the reason we need that is because we need to set a course for our TACAM. So a TACAM will take us basically to whoops to the target there. But that's no good coming in at that angle. We need to come on on the correct course line, the course line of 094 degrees like that. So what we're going to do is going to set a course line in our HSI to, to be that there. That course line is going to be uh, designated from the TACAM station there. And our aircraft is going to basically work up. We're going to work our way to the course line, get on the course line, use that as an approach, and then the TACAN will guide us down to the runway. Things to note at this point, the TACAN stations are never actually on the runway. They're usually up to, well, 200 feet sub beside the runway. So we've got to take that into account when landing. So we're going to use our TACAN as our localizer. That means it's going to steer us left and right, or allow us to steer left and right to stay correctly on the localizer. What are we going to use as the glide slope? Well, the glide slope, we're going to have to be, get creative. So what we're going to do is uh, stick to the rule of thumb that for a basic airfield landing, for every mile out above the threshold of the landing, we want to be 300 feet. So once we're 10 miles out, something like that, we want to be 3,000 feet. Once we're 5 miles out, 1,500 feet, and so on. So that is what we're going to use as our glide slope. And if even in a plane that's got proper ILS system, you don't have to use the ILS. You can use this system for practice. It's perfectly good. Works every time. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Um, right, so let's get on with it. Unpause. First thing we want to do is get our TACAN set up. So, TACAN. Transmit receive. On. 31 X ray. Enter. Next, we want our HSI. HSI on. TACAN engage. There's our TACAN station there. Next, we want to set the course line. Course line, where is that? Keep your finger on left click there until the line comes up. Then type in the number, which was uh, 94 degrees. Enter and stop. What could possibly be wrong with that? Well, what's wrong with that is that from the map, we took the, uh, we took the geographic map-based bearing. Now, remember, the Hornet is going to work from a magnetic bearing. Um, now there is a six degree in the Caucasus, there is a six degree difference between magnetic and map based bearing. So that is a discrepancy that we have to take account of. If we don't, we cannot make this landing. Uh, there are two options. We can change the Hornet so that it no longer works to the magnetic north. Uh, they can do that. Or what we can do is a little bit of maths, what we're going to do to convert. So 094 uh, map based bearing to magnetic bearing. All we have to do is take six off. Uh, from it. So instead of 094, it's actually going to be 088. So let's unpause. Let's try that again. 088, enter. You can see we've got that there, and I can assure you that that is now the correct bearing. So always when you're having to do conversions like this, always remember the difference between the true, the land, uh, sorry, the map 
um, bearing, which is known as the true bearing, and the magnetic bearing, um, which is the magnetic, as we've discussed. Right, so next we want to get ourselves onto our approach course line. So we've got symbology on the hub there, telling us that we need to go to the right at the moment to get the course line. And we've got the um, HSI here. Now the HSI is so good in the Hornet that I don't even bother using the HUD symbology. What I'm going to do is zoom all the way down to five miles to give me maximum resolution. And I'm going to get onto that line there. When I'm at that line there, I'm going to turn left and line up the 08, uh, 088 uh, on the magnetic heading up here. Uh, also, we want to be reducing height because at 10 miles, we're at 20 miles. Whoops, I just realized I'm stalling. Um, at 10 miles, we want to be at an altitude of 3,000 feet. Now, that's the next thing. We want to work to AGL, not ASL. ASL will not work for this. So we want to change our um, altimeter to radar instead of barometric. And there we can see it's got... Oh, hang on. Yeah. Um, we can. It's currently B for barometric. That's because we're above 5,000 feet, feet, I think that is. As soon as we get down, it'll go to radar. And then that's what we'll be using. Very important for this. Do not try and use barometric unless you zero your barometric to the runway that we're going to. You can do that. Uh, but we're just going to be lazy and use the radar. And it's safer using the radar anyway. In fact, I'll just suggest Altitude. using the radar. Altitude. Shut up, woman. Right, so... Uh, I guess I'm going to skip forward. Into, oh, no, we've reached our... Um, We've reached our core sign. If you can see on our HSI, I was gabbing away there as usual. Didn't notice. So you can zoom in here and get a really detailed look. So I'm not quite ready to level off yet. A little bit further. And there we go. That's us. So now we want to get an imagined magnetic heading of 088. Let's see if we can get that done. And we should see that that lines us up perfectly with our horse line. We're slightly off to the left. I made the turn slightly wrong. It's a bit of a skill getting that turn right, uh, and I'm not very good at it. We're going to level out here now until we get to Angels, uh, until we get to 10 miles, sorry. Keeping a good eye on this. Let's try making that turn again. Okay, 088, and you can see we're bang on the course line there, the course line marker, that vertical line, uh, which essentially becomes our localizer for this landing. And that is pixel perfect on to the Takan station. Right, so we've now just got to uh, skip a bit of time until we get to uh, 10 miles. Okay, we've reached 10 miles and we're heading into the soup now, so here's where it can get a little bit ugly. Uh, we're at just about 3,000 feet, so we're good. Now we want to put our approach. Our approach is set for a three, three degrees descent. So we want to put our path vector on about minus three. So that's zero, that's five, and that will be three about there. As well as that, we're going to use our course li a localizer line here to chase the localizer and just keep a regular check on here as well as a sanity check. Right, I'm going to start heading back to 088 now. And now we're just going to do the maths as we go. So eight miles, eight times uh, three is twenty-four. So yep, we're at the right, we're at the right height for that. Right, we've got to think about getting dirty now. So we've got to think about getting our gear out and all that stuff. Now this will make it difficult at this point. You will start um, uh, messing around with your altitude because of trim and stuff like that. So just accept that, and um, we'll get around that fine. Just going to lose some speed at the moment because we're approaching a bit fast. Below two fifty knots, gear out with the G key. Right, the trim's starting to mess up a bit now. We're not going to worry about our E-bracket. This isn't a carrier landing. Just a visual is all we're going to want to worry about. We've slipped off the localizer slightly, so ever is slightly right. Flaps are going to come down stage one. Again, it's going to mess up our trim, so sort your trim out. Try and stay as much as you can on altitude. Right, we're at five miles now. Five times three is 1,500. We've slipped below the glide slope. It's probably because of my trim messing around, and we've got too slow. Yep, 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 yep. I know, I know, I know. So we're going to just arrest our descent a little bit until we catch up the uh, localizer. In fact, I'm just going to pause. Speaking and doing this is almost impossible. Like when I was trying to do my um, IFR carrier approach, you just can't speak and think at the same time. So we slip slightly off the localizer there. So we're going to just polish right ever so slightly. We're at four miles now. Four times three is 12. So we're below the glide slope. We need to get that done. So slip right below the glide slope, sort the speed out. And that's all we need to do. So add power add trim, add some right roll, 
Calm down, baby. Calm down. Whoa, easy now. If, you, if I'm flying a bit funny, it's just me trying to sort my trim out. Speed is good. 900 um, feet are going a little askew now. I'm just going to pause it again to see what the hell I've done. Oh, uh, we've flown off course thinking about my bloody... Um, Thinking about my bloody trim, so we're going to have to do some evasive manoeuvring now to get back, but that's okay. We can handle that. Two miles should be 600 feet, so we're above the glide slope now. Okay, I mean, being slightly off to the right is not too bad, because remember that attack hand station is on the left anyway. There we're 600 feet, we're on glide slope. Uh, that was uh, 600 feet, two miles. That's radar warning going off, radar altitude warning, we're fine, we're getting back onto the glide slope now. Gear is out, going to full flaps now. I'm a bit of a noob Hornet driver, so I may not make this look particularly good. Just got to retrim. Power on, just realised I'm stalling. Whee! Right, where the bloody hell are we? Oh, there's the runway! Ha <laughs> ha! Can we save this? It got a bit ugly at the end there, as you saw. Uh, when I just started trying to do too many things. And let's see if we can put her down, okay? And feather. And down we go. Yeah, not too shabby for a first go. So that shows that even if you don't have a ground based ILS system, you can make it up with whatever you've got. Tacan, use Tacan. ADF, use ADF. Um, whatever you've got, um, use it. Use it in combination with a HSI and a course line, and you can land pretty much anywhere you need to. Um, as long as you've got a Tacan station or whatever you've got to. To use, right, go out, get your tack on, get your course line set, do your magnetic um, deviation, uh, work out your glide slopes mathematically, and um, go and try it. I hope that helps, and I'll see you later.